Hello everyone and welcome to our chapter one fundamentals of computing. Okay, so for this video, we will be learning the following. Our learning objectives would be the introduction to computer, its functionalities, the computer components, the characteristics of computer. Of course, we will differentiate what is the data, information, and knowledge, and also the computer viruses. So I believe you guys have, a, have already an idea what a computer is all about. So this is just for a recap and also some of, uh, I'll, I'll be giving you some of the information that you must know, know about the computers, okay? Let's start with the computer. Of course, a computer is an electronic device operating under the control of instructions stored in its own memory that can accept data or the input. The, uh, the process, it processes the data according to specified rules, produce information, and store the information for the future use. So I believe um, you have already used a computer. Also, uh, um, makita niyo sa, sa school or, or sa inyong balay or anywhere. Okay, so again, it uh, it is an electronic device that uh, operating under the control of instructions stored in its own memory. So as easy as that. Okay, so what is the co uh, functionalities of a computer? It takes data as input. Okay, after taking the data, it stores the data or instructions in its memory and use them when required. Okay, processes the data and converts it into a useful information. And it generates an output and it controls all, all the above four steps. Okay, again, it, we're gonna take the data, and we're gonna store the data, and we're gonna process the data and generates the output. So this is a step. Okay, so that is the functionality of a computer. Okay, next. So um, the computer has this very easy process model. Now it has input, process, and output. So the user will gonna input the computer, no input, the computer will gonna process it, okay? And then it provides an output to the user. So the computer input is called the data. Okay, if you are using computer, um, if you're providing the input to it, that's a data. And then the output obtained after processing it based on the user instruction is called information. Okay, so let us say for example, I click on the, the Google Chrome, you know, you provided an input to your computer and then the Chrome is um, opened and then you search into it and then the, the uh, it will gonna give you the information, something like that. It's just a basic um, description about the input process output model. Okay, real facts and figures can be processed using arithmetic and logical operations to obtain information, or called also data. So as you can, again, it's a very easy. You know, it's just an, a user will get input something and then it will be processed. Then it will gonna give you an output. So that is the simple model of a computer. Next, what are the different components of a computer? A computer has, of course, a hardware and a software. Okay, so what is a hardware? A hardware, it refers to the physical parts of or components of a computer, such as the monitor, the mouse, the keyboard, the computer data storage, the hard drive disk or HDD, the system unit, um, the graphic card, sound cards, memory, motherboard, etc. All of which are physical objects that can be touched. Okay, so that is hardware. I believe this is, this is very understandable because you've been using this all the time. Okay. Okay, so a hardware has input device, device and output device. Okay, for for the input device, what is an input device? It is any peripheral. Okay, it is a piece of computer hardware equipment to provide data and control signals to an information processing system, such as a computer or other information appliance. Appliance. Okay, 
Uh, five widely used input devices are, of course, we. This is very known. Uh, um, the keyboard, the mouse, the microphone, the scanner, and the webcam. So, of course, what is a keyboard? A keyboard. Keyboard. It contains keys um, to enter data into the computer. For some security purposes, some keyboards include a fingerprint reader, which allows you to work with the computer only if your fingerprint is recognized. So as you can see here, yeah, that is a keyboard. So Kabaloko, uh, you're very familiar with it because you've been using this all the time. Next, we have mouse. Okay, of course the mouse is a small handheld device. With the mouse, you can control movement of a small symbol on the screen, okay? Or call the pointer, and you make selections from the screen. Okay, this is the mouse, okay? This, this is not a, an animal. Someone is a mouse, okay? Bulo ko gamitin na niya always. And then the microphone. So, microphone, it allows you to speak into the computer. No? A scanner can convert printed materials such as text and pictures into a form a computer can use. So it's a very, you know, hindi na kailangan i-discuss, no? You know what microphone is all about. Of course, a webcam or cam. No? It is a digital video camera that allows you to create movies or take pictures and store them on the computer um, instead of a tape or, or film. Yeah. So the uh, five most commonly used um, input devices, again, it includes the webcam, the keyboard, the mouse, and uh, yeah, the microphone, okay? So as you can see in the picture, so again, keyboard, mouse, webcam, microphone. Next. But we also have output devices. So those were input, input devices. So for the output devices, um, it is uh, any hardware component that conveys information to one or more people. Okay, to one or more people. And the three commonly used output devices are printer, a, mo a monitor, and speaker. So I think we have a sample in here. Okay, so how does it look like? Printer monitor, and then a speaker. So those were output device, okay? So again, a printer, of course, it produces text and graphics and a physical medium, such as paper, okay? A monitor displays, um, a wait, wait. A monitor displays text, graphics, and videos and screens. The speakers allows you to hear music, voice and other audios. So uh, yeah, that's it. That's all for the output device. Next, system unit. So what is a system unit? A system unit is a case that contains the electronic components of the computer that are used to process data. The circuitry of the system unit usually is a part of or is connected to a circuit board called the motherboard. So again, guys, this is not the CPU. No, a lot of you actually call this as a CPU. No, that is a system unit. Okay, the CPU is just part of the motherboard. No, just part of the system unit. Okay, so the system unit has the processor, memory, and storage devices. So again, that is not a CPU. A CPU is part of a system unit. So if someone asks you to please turn on the CPU, <laughs> you turn on the system unit, not the CPU. Okay, so again, the system unit is a case that contains the electronic components of the computer that are used to process the data. So what are the different memories? We have the primary memories and secondary memories of a computer. First memory is the random access memory or the RAM. So what is the RAM? RAM is a memory scheme within the computer system responsible for storing data in a temporary basis, okay? So that it can be promptly accessed by the processor as when and as and when needed. So it is a volatile in nature, which means that the data will be erased 
once the supply to the storage device is turned off. So, kung kumaturn off na ang, ang um, computer, all the temporary store data will be erased. Okay? RAM stores data randomly and the processor accesses this data randomly from the RAM storage. RAM is considered random access because you can access any memory cell directly if you know the row and column that is intersect at the cell. Okay? And for the room, the read-only memory, it is a permanent form of storage. Okay? The room stays active regardless of whether supply to it is turned on or off. The ROM devices do not allow data stored on them to be modified. So again, that is the difference between the RAM and then the room. So those were the primary memory of the computer. Okay, so delete malibog ana ha. So again, so random access, um, a random access memory. It is a memory scheme within the responsible for storing data in, in temporary basis. So room is for permanent form of storage. So I hope nga nasabda na ninyo. Next, the secondary memory. Okay, the secondary memory, it stores data and programs per permanently. Okay, it retained after the power is turned off. So before, uh, even if it's turned off na siya, then it will, you know, the data will still remain. So first is the hard drive. Okay, so what is this hard drive or HD? A hard disk is a part of a unit called a disk drive. Hard drive or hard disk, hard drive, disk drive that stores and provides relatively quick access to large amounts of data on an electromagnetically charged surface or set of surfaces. So, uh, ito yung ito, ito niya. Ganito yan. Okay? And next, we also have a, um, another drive which is called the optical drive. This is, I, I believe, uh, you always see in the now the ganon mo optical disk. Okay, so an optical disk drive or ODD is a disk drive that uses laser, laser light as part of the process of reading and writing to or from optical disk. Okay, and then the flash, the flash disk. So this is the flash disk. Dili na siya USB. Okay, a lot of you call this as USB. USB is the port, universal serial bus. Okay. But ang tawag ni is FD, or flash disk. So it is a storage module made of flash memory chips. A flash disk have no mechanical platters or access arms. But the term disk is used, to, uh, used because the data are accessed as if they were in the hard drive. The disk storage store is emulated. So I believe these secondary memories are very familiar to you guys. And nakita na po siguro ni ninyo. No? And nahawiran na nagamit na. Okay? So um, this is the comparison between the RAM and then the secondary memory or the hard disk. The RAM, okay, random access memory is the memory, okay. The hard drive, hard disk is the storage. The RAM, smaller amount, it's uh, typically 500 MB to 6 gig, while the hard disk is typically 80 gig to 1000 gig, okay. Um, the RAM also is a temporary storage of files and programs. The hard disk is the permanent storage of files and programs. A little like your real desktop is only your current work on it, which could be ruined by a spill of Coke or coffee. But hard disk is like a file cabinet. No? It has a long-term storage of work. It's safe from spill. And we also have... In, in RAM, contents disappear when you turn off the power, when you turn off power to the computer and when the computer crashes. But in, in the hard disk, con uh, contents remain when you turn off the power to the computer. They don't disappear unless purposely delete them and when the computer crashes. It con uh, the RAM consists of chips or microprocessor. The hard disk consists of hard disk or platters. So the RAM also, when you want to use a program, a temporary copy is put into RAM and that's the copy you use. But for the hard disk, it holds the original copy of the program permanently. So it's very important that you guys has 
this idea what a RAM and what is a hard disk is. Okay, so you may have noticed mga good um, if you buy laptops or computers na ay mga RAM, pila ang yung RAM, no? Pila ang RAM ani, pila ang hard disk ani. Okay, so I hope you guys have understand now the difference between those memory, okay, between those disk or drives. Okay, next. Next component of com computer, again, um, the hardware, if you haven't, you know, understand anything, just, uh, you may search on it uh, in, uh, in Kogu or you may also review this video. And next component of a computer is a software. So what is this software? Software is just program. Now, it is a generic term for organized collection of computer data and instructions, often broken into two major categories the system software and then the application software so when we say um, system software it provides the basic and task specific functions of the computer and then the application software is used by users to accomplish specific tasks okay so again the system software it is responsible for controlling integrating and managing the individual hardware components of a computer system so that other software and users of the system see it as a functional unit without having to be concerned with the low level data such as transferring data from the memory to disk or rendering text into display. And generally, uh, system software consists of an operating system. I believe you are very familiar with operating system and some fundamental utilities such as, uh, such as disk formatters, file managers, display managers, text editors, user authentication and management tools, and networking and device control software. So um, again, I, I know that you are familiar with um, Windows, Linux, iOS, Android OS, something like those things. So those were the system software. Okay, so delete malibu kung sa tawagan nila. Okay. And we also have application software. The application software is used to accomplish specific tasks other than just running the computer system. Okay. It consists of a single program. Again, huh? it consists of a single program. Example, an image viewer, a small collection of programs or often called as a software package that work closely together to accomplish a task such as you know we have spreadsheets text processing system or it will also called a larger collection or the software suite so related but independent programs and packages that have a common user interface or shared data format okay we have some examples microsoft office um, which consists of plus the integrated word processor, spreadsheets, databases, etc. Okay? And also, it is a collection of fundamental programs that may provide some service to a variety of other independent applications. So, as you can see, we have sample applications he here Google Drive, Gmail, Word, etc. I'm going to install this in a computer. Okay? So, the comparison with okay so again the system software it is responsible for all the controlling integrating and managing the individual hardware components the application software is the program no is it just a single program okay I hope you guys have understand the comparison between the the um, the application software and then the system software. So let's move on with the unit of measurement. So it's very important also <clears throat> that when studying the, the basic components of the computers, you know the unit of measurement. So the basic unit used in a computer data storage is called a bit. Again, the basic unit used in a computer data storage is a bit or binary digit. So what is this binary digit? The one and zero. 
So I know guys that you're not yet very familiar with this, but don't worry because but on the next chapters we will be um at the initial tun ano gayo. Okay. So computers use these little bits which are composed of ones and zeros to do things and talk to computers. Okay, so when you actually provide uh, provide inputs to your computer, it will be processed, and by processing that, um, the computer translates it to its computer language to you know binary digits to one and zero. Okay, to do to do things and talk to other computers. So all your files, for instance, are kept in the computer as a binary file and translated into words and pictures by the software which is also ones and zeros. So this two number system is called a binary number system since it has only two numbers in it, okay? Binary. The decimal number system is contrast has 10 unique digits, zero to, uh, zero to nine. Okay, so we have this sample. Computer storage unit, bit, one bit, zero or one. The kilobyte or the key B is actually around or 10,024 bytes, okay? The megabyte or MB is um, 1,024 1, kilobytes. Sorry, the kilobyte is 1,024 bytes, okay? The megabyte is 1,024 kilobytes. The gigabyte is 1,024 megabytes. The terabyte is 1,024 gigabytes, or the TB. So I hope uh, you familiarize yourself with the different computer storage units. Kaya muna ginagamit sa computer. So again, we have bit, kilobyte, a megabyte, gigabyte, or terabyte. Okay. So next is the speed measurement. So the speed of central processing unit or the CPU is measured by Hertz, HZ. Okay, again, the speed of a central processing unit or the CPU. Again, the CPU is part of a system unit, you know, which is measured by hertz. Hertz, okay? So which represents a CPU cycle. So the speed of a CPU is known as computer speed. Okay, the, the CPU speed measures are as follows. One hertz or HZ, one cycle per second, okay? And one M, HZ is 1 million cycles per second or 1,000 hertz. And then the 1GHZ is 1 billion cycles per second or 1,000 megahertz. Okay, so that is gigahertz and then megahertz. Okay, so please familiarize yourself with the speed measurement also. Next, the computer classifications. So I hope, uh, I believe this is very, you know, pretty basic and we've been using this all the time. So we have first is the personal computer, okay? Personal computer, a, a small single user computer based on a microprocessor. So in addition to the microprocessor, a personal computer, of course, it has keyboard, it has monitor, and the storage device for this for saving it. Okay, so Kasagara Figuros Enyo Haron has a personal computer. For, yeah, and of course, workstation. So, in a, a workstation, this is a powerful single, a single user computer. It is like a personal computer, but it is more powerful microprocessor and higher quality monitor. So, medyo high end. Of course, it's for work, okay? And then the mini computer, uh, the mini computer is a multi-user computer. It is capable of supporting from 10 to 100 of users simultaneously. So this is actually not the, not the image. No, this is just a sample image. <clears throat> and next we have the supercomputer. The supercomputer is an extremely fast computer that can perform hundreds of millions of instructions per second. So, do you have a support computer in there? That's really awesome. Okay, next is a laptop. A laptop 
very familiar with you guys. Okay, kabalo ko nakagamit na mani nagita na ninyo is it is a battery or easy powered personal computer that can be easily carried and used in a variety of locations. Okay. So dili na kay nato siya dugayon no kay kabalo naman tato. Of course, netbook is this is a kind a type of laptop that is designed to be even more portable. So medyo gamay-gamay siya, okay? These are often cheaper than laptops or desktops. So um, these are gener generally less powerful than other types of computers, but they provide enough power to email and internet access, which is where the name netbook came from. So if you're if you're just using it for online classes or just simple lang in button, simple lang in button sa computer, then a netbook will do. No? Kaya mas barato man siya kaysa uh, laptop. Pero sa karon I think um, netbook and laptops are more perparyo na siya, no price. So better ano na lang buy with laptop. Okay, of course, mobile device, no smartphone, tablets. Okay, okay a tablet, of course, you you know what a tablet is. No, it is like a laptop. It is uh, designed to be um, more portable. So it has, it provides a very different computing experience. But there are actually tablets today na pwede nung siya attach, pwede ka maka-attach of keyboard and mouse. You know? But ang uban is wala. Okay? So I hope na kabaw na mo anak. And I know na nakagamit na inyo. And then can I, I believe everyone has smartphones, okay? So smartphone, it is a powerful mobile phone that is designed to run a variety of applications in addition to the phone service. So current siguro, in your online flexible learning, I believe you're using your smartphones, right? Okay, now let's move forward and differentiate what data what is data, information, and knowledge? So when we say data, data are the facts and figures which relay something specific, but which are not organized in any way and which provide no further info, information regarding patterns, context, or etc. So data means unstructured facts and figures that have the least impact on the typical manager. Again, these are just the facts and figures which relate really something specific. Mm -hmm. so for example, um, you wanted to count how many, um, how many born males and females for the year 2020. So what you're going to do is you are just, you know, find the data on it. You, know? you, you check. Kung you just check. Um, just a piece of information. Okay, so delete pa siya information. Okay, mura pa siya mga, mga figures. Okay? Mura gula pa siya na organized ng mga ano ba? Ng mga facts. So, familiar na po dun siguro ano. Okay? And next, information. Uh, information, for data to become information, it must be contextualize. So, if kata imong mga naget na mga data na contextualize na mo, then that is the information. It's already categorized. It is uh, calculated and condensed. So, uh, information thus paints a bigger picture. So, it is data with relevance and purpose. It may convey a trend in the environment or perhaps indicate a pattern of sales for a given period of time. Essentially, information is found in answers to questions that begin with just words as who, what, where, when, and how many. So again, um, when the data is contextualized and categorized, it would be, it is called the information. So again, the information paints a bigger picture. The knowledge, the knowledge is closely linked to doing and implies know-how and understanding. 
the knowledge possessed by each individual is a product of his experience and encompasses the norms by which he evaluates new inputs from his surroundings. These are the learnings that you get. Okay? Again, it's linked to doing and implies know how and understanding. Okay, so so I hope that why why we did uh, discuss the data information and knowledge because it's very important that uh, you know those terms because that is what the computer do. No, you give data, it provides it for its being processed, and it gives you information, and then you get the knowledge. Okay, so um, let's discuss the characteristics of a computer. Of course, a computer has a speed, accuracy, diligence, storage capability, and versatility. So there are a lot of things that you can do with computers, and especially today that we are in a flexible learning. So it would be very hard. The, to do this, to do this online learning, if we don't have computers. So imagine, how are we going to do it? Okay. <clears throat> okay, so let's talk naman with different computer viruses. So of course, there are virus, you know, just like human being, virusan, the computers also puede sa virusan. okay? So a virus, is, is a small piece of software that piggybacks on real programs, okay? So for example, a virus might attack itself to a program such as a spreadsheet program. So each time the spreadsheet program runs, the virus runs, runs to and it has the chance to reproduce by attacking to other programs or wreak havoc. So um, possible na it crash na niya different application there are. Or, Possible put nga virus can you, you know damage your, comp your computer, no? Mag blue screen na siya dara, tingala na lang kaya na nadaot na mo hard drive, na korap na mo hard drive. So it's very important that you familiarize your, yourself with the different viruses. Okay, kung unsa ang mga possible viruses na pwede mo attack sa imong computer. First, okay, we have email viruses. Okay, as for the email, uh, email viruses, an email virus travels as an attachment to email messages and usually replicates itself by automatically mailing itself to dozens of people in the victim's email address book. Some email viruses don't even require a double click. So they launch when you view the infected message in the preview pane of your email software. So it's very important, guys, now if you... You, you know, delete na basta basta mag subscribe to any other websites para makuha ng email. Okay, you must also protect your emails. And do not just click anything kung sa ang ginasendera sa yung email. It should be legit. Dapat um, makita ni Mudaan, no? Kung nakaspam siya. So meaning, ana talagang spam to siyang message. So just don't open it. Just delete it. Okay, so it's very important that you don't just click on it. If you feel like you don't want to click on it, then don't click it. Okay, because of the ones that have more than 1 million. So, they have more than phone, iPhone, they have more than email. So, it's clear that those were not you know, legit emails. So, it's very important that when you click, when you receive emails and click each content, you can click on it and click on it and click on it. Insecto. And do not just subscribe to any other sites na mga, you know, kung sa baka na nalang mga legit ba na or really. Okay? Because possible nga, maatakan ka o virus. Next, Trojan Horses. So the Trojan Horse is, a sim is simply a computer program. The program claims to do one thing. It may claim to be a game, but instead does damage when you run it. So it may, it may erase your hard disk. So Trojan horses have no way to replicate automatically. So again, it is something like a computer program. Okay, now kung imo siyang iparan, so virus na dito siya. Okay, so again, it may corrupt or erase your hard disk. So kung matingala mo nga nadaot inyong hard, di hard disk, no, nawala inyong tanang data, so base na mo na open application, 
and then it's a, it has a Trojan horses and then a cause of damage. So it's very important also na be aware no? of, of the viruses. But don't worry because it's not on the next slides on how to, you know, how to solve these problems. Okay, the worms. So a worm is a small piece of software that uses computer networks and security holes to replicate itself. A copy of the worm scans the network for another machine that has a specifically security hole. So it copies itself to the new machine using the security hole and then starts replicating from there as well. So again, um, it replicates itself. Okay, it is a piece of so software again that uses computer networks and security holes to replicate itself. Okay, ingat ingat. Okay, so how to avoid the viruses and lessen their impact? All you have just to do is very easy lang install antivirus software programs no? from a reputable vendor, update it and use it regularly. Dili po ka basta basta ma install og antivirus na ra dili gikan sa reputable vendor. Okay? Possible na ka imong i install sa imong um computer is virus na mismo, dili siya antivirus. So be very careful, especially na uban, I believe nga gapangita crack mga crack. So there are a lot of free viruses, so you have to find the crack one kato ng mga free and pwede na mong ma-install sa mong computer. Okay? Na may, na may, na mo kayo makita. Okay? So in addition to scanning for viruses on regular basis, so after installing that antivirus program, um, you set its schedule for scanning for viruses. Could be in regular basis or weekly. Go up to you. So install an on-axis scanner included in the most antivirus software packages. So, naana ni siya daan. No? Pag open niya sa antivirus, um, you just click the scan and configure it to start each time you start your computer. So, this will protect your system by checking for viruses each time you run an executable file. So, just turn on, turn on the antivirus and that's it. Next, use a virus scan because, uh, before you open any new programs or files that may contain executable code. So this includes package software that you may buy from the store as well as any program you might download from the internet. If you're a member of an online community or chat room, be very caref careful about accepting files or clicking links that you find or that people send you within the community. Then make sure to back up your data, always back up your data documents, um, bookmark files, important email messages uh, on desk so that it, in the event of virus infection, you didn't lose valuable work. For, so now um, Google Drive is free. Now you have 15 gig free storage. So you save it online and for you to have a backup always. Okay, so that would be all for this video. And we have learned and introduced to you guys the introduction to computers, its components, its characteristics, and just go back to the previous you know, slides. If we will not have done, then feel free to get in touch if you have any questions and queries. So thank you so much. God bless and have a great day to you.